Am I too close to it? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I was just a little too close to it. You now, you are now a resident of OG Shire. <laughs> okay, OG Shire. There we go. Uh, this is our new uh, our new town. Okay, so this is a you know if all if everything works out well, this will turn out to be uh, like a coastal coastal town. Um, we got this bay here and everything. So ooh, is that a crab down there? Looks like a big giant crab. Hello everyone, I am an old guy gaming and I'm going to go ahead and start a new series here on Eco. I've been wanting to play this game for quite some time. I know it's been out for a few years now, uh, but I just never got around to it until now. And so I'm going to start this up. I'm pretty much for all intents and purposes going to be playing this blind. I have watched, you know, one or two YouTube videos here and there and read up on it a little bit, but uh, don't know really how to play it at all. Uh, for all intents and purposes, like I said. So this is going to be essentially a blind playthrough. And as such, I do invite all of you who are going to watch uh, to leave comments and help me out uh, with the game. Uh, but please, no spoilers, though. So uh, tips and tricks, that sort of thing is, is great. If I ask a specific question on how to do something, uh, you you know feel free to answer that. But please don't give me any spoiler you know types of information in the comments, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and start uh, a new game. I did actually start... A game called OG's First World, but when I got into it, I couldn't turn. I couldn't, you know, I, I, I could jump and move left and right, but I couldn't turn. So I went and checked the, uh, it, you know, verified the integrity of the game files, and it, they said they were fine. So um, we'll start a new game, uh, another new game, and hopefully, you know, we don't continue to have that problem. All right, so let's go ahead and click on New Game here, and uh, we got to go all the way over to the right, and we're going to call this, um, we're just going to call this OG's World like that okay um no friends can join because this is just going to be a single player game i do want to have the threat of the meteor but uh i'm going to bump this up to 90 days instead of 30 only because this is my very first time playing it and you know i don't want to just get into the groove and then have the world uh become you know get destroyed from what i understand uh it's very difficult to defeat the meteor in 30 days in a single player game now that may not be true maybe they've changed it i don't know but that's what i've heard so uh, for our first time out, you know, we're going to go a little easier on ourselves, and we're going to start with 90 days. Uh, generate random landscape. I guess what that means is, you know, if we don't have that checked, I'm assuming there's probably a default map that the game uses. And, um, yeah, let, let's go ahead and, and, and do random. And, you know, it really doesn't matter to me what that random seed is, so that's what the seed's going to be. <laughs> All right? I don't know how or or how I should adjust these multipliers. So I'm going to just leave them as they are at this point. But you guys, you know, tell me in the comments if there are th there's a setting that's recommended or settings that are recommended for these things for a single player game. I'm just going to leave them the way they are for now. And then, you know, if it turns out that uh, I, you know, th there's some major things here that we should have adjusted you know, we'll, we'll cross a bridge when we come to it, okay? Um, so, let's go ahead and click the start button. And yes, we want to generate a random new world. And then uh, we have to wait for everything to uh, to load up. It doesn't take too terribly long on my machine to, to do this. Probably in two or three minutes, I'm thinking. So, yeah, this is, this is going to be interesting. This game is, it is a, I don't know, the, it's sort of like a survival game, but I think it's more crafting and balance oriented and but and what i mean by that and this is again just from what i understand of it i've never played it myself that you have to you know the the overall theme of the game is that you have to build up a, a civilization and infrastructure you have to harvest resources um in order to get enough high tech to defeat the meteorite which i believe are these uh, laser cannon things that you have to build in the end game that'll blow the meteorite up before it crashes on the planet and destroys the planet however uh, in the process of doing that, you have to you have to balance, you know, the the industry with the the ecosystem. Because if you go hog wild and you just start cutting down all the trees and killing all the animals and mining all the ores and stuff, you you pollute the planet and you and you can ruin the planet. And so you have to kind of balance those two things uh, as you go along. And then of course, depending upon how you set the days until the meteorite strikes the planet, you know, you, you're right, uh, working against the clock too. So very interesting. Uh, from what I understand, this game is not its not really so much about combat. Um, I, I don't even think you, the player can actually die in the game, uh, from what I understand. So it's not, you know, like most other survival games, 
you know, like Seven Days to Die and Imperium and some of the other games that I play all the time, there's going to be, you know, less combat, less violence uh, in the game, and it's going to be more about balance. And I'm okay with that. It's something different, you know, a, a different change of pace, you know, from what we normally do. Uh, you can hunt the animals. Uh, from what I understand, the animals won't attack you back, but maybe maybe that's not true. I'm not sure. So, you know, we'll just kind of see how things go. All right, let's go ahead and set up our character. Uh, we're going to be a dude, of course, um, and uh, we're going to lighten up our skin a little bit just because I am a Caucasian, of course, and we'll set the color kind of more that way, and something like that's probably good. Uh, honestly, I don't really care a whole lot about this kind of thing. It's just not that big a deal to me, but, you know, we'll we'll go through. Uh, I can set this to uh, to to bald because I have no hair. Well, not on my head, anyways, in real life. But um, when we put the hat on, then it adds the hair back. So this kind of doesn't matter. We we will go with the fuller, the hardy beard because that's a little bit more like you know what we got going on here. And we should probably make the beard. Um, does this affect the color of the beard here? Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah. So we should probably go with a a, a grayer beard because you know gray beard, right? And so we'll do that and that sort of thing. It almost looks more like a blonde beard than a gray beard, but we can go with that. That's good enough. And then, uh, yeah, we got the facial hair, eye color. Uh, we should probably make the eye color brown because that's the color of my actual eyes in real life. So, yeah, that's good enough. We'll make it brown like that. Um, for the backpack, let's make the backpack kind of a bluish color. That looks good. We'll go with this shirt, the Henley shirt, and how do I get rid of that screen tip? Okay, and we'll just make it a white shirt. Good enough. Um, actually, you know what? No, let's make this more of a kind of a a browner shirt. It's probably fine the way it was. Let's go with the belt, and we'll make the belt uh, a brown brown belt because that's usually what belt colors are. For the pants, we'll leave the pants the way they are, except for actually I'd like to make them a little more bluish for blue jeans. That's good. Faded blue jean look. Uh, for the boots, we'll go for the big boots. We can't even see them because we're in the grass there. And uh, we want to make those pretty much black. And then finally the hat. See, the hat adds the hair on the head. So we unfortunately we can't be a, a, a bald guy like we would be in real life, but is what it is, right? Uh, for the hat, let's make that, um, let's just make it kind of a brownish hat too because I think that will probably work. And we could even make it a little, well, let's make it a darker brown. Yeah, that looks good. We'll go with that. All right, so we will create our avatar. We'll click save, and we are now in the world. Um, is that window supposed to be up at the top? Oh, I guess it is. Okay. Interesting, because when I first, when I logged into my first world, the one where I couldn't move around, this was actually down here. So maybe something just wasn't working right. Uh, but I can, you know, I can move now. I can turn, which is good. Ooh, wow. That mouse is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that mouse is really, uh, Sensitive. Let's go into here, controls, and let's bump this down to maybe here-ish. Let's just try three and see uh, if that's better. That's still really hot. Really hot. Okay, let's go. Let's try two. Um, yeah, uh, look, we can go with that. We can go that. I'm almost thinking maybe two and a half. Close enough. Okay, yeah, let's go with that. That feels a little bit better. Now, um, we're going to go through the tutorial now, so we have to press the tab key to get our, our cursor up on the screen, and let's click this. Uh, I am going to do all the tutorials because here again, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so we're going to learn the game uh, from scratch. Uh, so we already pressed tab to toggle the mouse cursor off and on. Use uh, WSAD to move around the world. So let's get rid of our cursor, and okay, and press space to jump. Off, awesome. Okay, so we got that task completed. And is that it for this tutorial? I, yes, it is. Okay. Now it wants us to do a tent. So let's click that. Setting up a camp. The first step is to find an appropriate place to set up your camp. It's probably a good idea to find a location close to natural resources, such as food, surface, stone, or trees. Open your backpack with B or by clicking the backpack icon, which is down here. Okay. So we'll click on that. We'll close this and we'll press B just so we can do it both ways. Drag the starter camp to your toolbar and select it. Okay. So we'll just put it right here in, whoop. If I, if I click on it, it goes back into the thing. So I just we just drag it and we don't click on it. Let's close the backpack and then we click on it to select it. Okay. Um, place your starting cap down in a good location. So uh, we want to be near, you know, resources. 
So place is the right mouse button and we can rotate with Q and R. I can't, I can't really see it really well though. I mean, I can, but I can't. Okay, I guess it's just kind of in front of us. All right, you know what I want to do? Let's press escape. No, not escape. How do we get out of this mode? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, uh, let's press tab and unselect that. Or we press two. To, okay, we press two on the on the keyboard. All right, let, let's look around a little bit before we place this tent down because we want to... Uh, you know, we want to be near resources. So we want to near, you know, be near trees and stone and maybe a food source. And this is kind of a cool looking area over here. Why don't we go over this way? Uh, is there like fall damage in this game? I don't know. See, I'm not, I'm not sure. One thing I don't know about is, you know, if you can get injured. Um, for Again, like I said before, from what I understand, you can't die. So I'm not sure exactly even how that works, but... We got some corn and looks like strawberries. Oh no, those are tomatoes. Okay, so there's food around here. That's good. Uh, there's going to be stone there and trees up this way. So let's just kind of go this way. Uh, being near the beach is a good idea for sand, uh, from what I understand too. Uh, the only reason I know that is because oh, look at that elk. Is because um, I I watched like I said, I just watched a little bit, a couple videos, and, and the guy whose video I was watching was mentioning that. Uh, this looks like a pretty good. Hello, dear. Uh, pretty good area, really. There's lots of trees around. There's plenty of food over that way. There's stone. Um, I really like the look of this. This is good. Uh, so, yeah, I think this is probably a, as good of an area as any. The only thing is, though, you know, it's almost kind of, kind of like a little glade here. Look at there's a turkey. How cool is that? Um, the only thing about this place, though, is it might be a little bit pumpkins. Might be a little small. We might need a little more room in this area. Boy, I sure like this though. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's go back this way. And there's a lot of food around here. My goodness. We could maybe we could do a beach house. I don't know. I don't know, man. We could potentially build I mean I'm th I'm kind of thinking this spot here, but can we here let, let before we do that, let's pick up pick the food. I know we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves in the tutorial, but I don't want to you know, I don't want to ruin all this food by placing the, the house and stuff down. So this is not ripe enough to harvest. Oh. Interesting. Okay. I wonder, too, if we have like a weight, you know, a weight limit. Not ripe enough to harvest. I know we can, you know, build a farm and all that. I don't know how to do it, but we'll figure that out. So let's just pick everything we can. It does feel like I might be getting a little encumbered here I think I don't know maybe maybe not okay so yeah I think I think this area right here is where we'll build and you know we have we have some space here we can we can always do a little bit of terraforming I guess if we have to that's not ripe enough to harvest that is okay that should be good enough we we got a lot of wood uh, not wood I'm sorry we got a lot of food uh, in our inventory it's all on our toolbar too can we can we shift right click to consume okay so this is our our food here um what i wanted to know though is can we like right click this or, or shift click it into the inventory it doesn't look like it so that means we have to drag everything what if we double click on it oh there we go okay double click let's just get that in that stuff into our inventory for now. Okay, so setting up a camp. Um, the other thing too, you know, we're gonna want to build a house, so we probably better not put the tent in the same area that we want to put the house in. So we'll probably put the house right in this, on this little, you know, flat area here. So let's put the tent kind of off to the side. Um, I'm thinking maybe right about here-ish. We'll pick a few more beets here. Can we pick sunflowers? No. That's not ripe yet. Okay. So, yeah, let's just plop the tent right down here. Because I'm assuming, you know, once we set it down, it's going to remove any plants underneath it kind of thing. And uh, if we look at our... Okay, that's due north. 
I don't know if that matters, you know, what the angle is. But this is pretty much facing south. So, yeah, that way we can kind of line it up on the blocks there. All right, let's do this. So we want to click on the tent to select it. Nope, that didn't do that. We want to... I'm pressing the wrong stuff here. There we go. Click on the tent to select it. And um, is it facing us right now? I think it is. Here, let's just rotate it a little bit. Okay, that's definitely to the side. Is that to the back? No, I think that's the front. Yeah, okay, here we go. Um, okay, I'm pressing the right mouse button, and it's not doing anything. What am I doing wrong? Am I too close to it? Oh, okay, yeah, I think I was just a little too close to it. You, you are now a resident of OG Shire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, OG Shire. There we go. Uh, this is our new uh, our new town. Okay, so this will you know if all if everything works out well, this will turn out to be uh, like a coastal coastal town. Um, we got this bay here and everything. So ooh, is that a crab down there? Looks like a big giant crab. Okay, cool. So hey, look at this, guys. We got our we got our campsite set up. All right, let's go ahead and continue uh, the tutorial here and see what else we have to do. When you're playing single player or on a server with fast forwarding enabled, you can speed up the passage of time by sleeping in a bed. You can sleep at any bed, including the one inside your starter camp. Try sleeping to pass a bit of time. Okay. Um, one question I guess I have about this, though, is that if, you know, if we're working against the clock for the meteorite, do we really want to pass time? Uh, do we need to sleep to replenish energy and health and that sort of thing? I mean, you know... Other than passing time, why else would we sleep? I guess that's a question I have, so let me know that in the comments if you guys know. Uh, we're going to press take a land claim papers from OG's camp site. Take. Why would I do that? I don't know. Here, maybe we'll figure that out later. Okay, let's press E to sleep. And then we can just sleep with our eyes open, I guess. And then let's just wake up. So we, we got a full almost eight minutes of rest there. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> I just mo mostly wanted to do it, you know, for the for the purpose of the tutorial. Music. That's the first music I've heard. Awesome. Okay, so let's do the next thing. Property. Normally, when you place object, they will be public unless they are placed on land you own. Fortunately, you already own the land around your camp. Building houses and objects outside of your own land will allow anyone to interact with them. Open your tent by looking at it and pressing E. Man, I keep hitting the wrong key there. Okay, look at the tent. Press E. Okay. Um, navigate to the authorization tab. Authorization tab. Open the authorization UI by clicking the property name. OG Shire. Okay. Um, now what do we do? Okay. So it's got a thing here now. So, this probably is how it appears on the map, the color, I'm guessing. If we edit this, what can... Oh, look at that. Okay, so that shows the area. I gotcha. That shows the area in which we're living in. That's pretty cool. This isn't a humongous planet, is it? it looks like it's fairly small. Uh, can you make the worlds larger? Does anybody know the answer to that question? Okay, so cool. This shows us our... Our, our area that we own. Um, okay, OG Shire may have four plots still left. Right click and move to draw. Click it already take, already take to position to erase. Nice grammar there. Press left control to temporarily switch layers. Left control. Okay. This probably doesn't matter because we're in single player. Uh, but I could definitely see where it would matter, you know, if, if we were in a multiplayer situation. So we wanted to kind of build a house over actually more in this area here. Um, do we? Does it have to be adjacent? Okay, hold on a sec. Right click and move to draw. Okay, that doesn't do anything. Click it already taken position to erase. Okay, so yeah, I'm clicking, but it's not doing anything. So I must be doing something wrong. I don't know what it is. 
It says, it says still left. Oh, may have still left zero. So I guess I don't have any plots left. That's probably what the deal is. But it looks like um, when I come into the map here, I can right click and, and claim more territory when I can get more plots. And I guess we'll figure out how that works in a while. All right, let's go ahead and uh, X out of here. No, no, no. Wait, are sure? Oh, yeah. Without saving. Okay, hold on. We got to save stuff in the map. Is that what submit means? Okay. Uh, all right, so what does this little thing do? Select a target to transfer ownership to. This will only be printed if you own the property or lost specifically lost property transfer action. Demographics, abandoned active admins, everybody. Hmm, okay, so multiplayer stuff. Uh, I do have a friend uh, in my Discord community who has an eco server going, and one of the reasons why I'm doing this is to kind of learn the game, and then I'll probably do some multiplayer with them. But I kind of wanted to have a little bit of a clue about what I was doing before before joining them. Okay, so this is the description. Um, I guess we could change like the name there, who can access. So this is just, you know, people on the server, which again, doesn't really apply to our single player game. Housing points, no furnished rooms on property. Residence, leave residency. Okay. All right. Well, you know, we'll, we'll probably learn more about this stuff as time goes on. Let's just continue on through the tutorial for now. Hold on a sec. Okay. So we'll close that. All right. So now we have um, the tool thingamadoodle that popped up. So let's click on that. In order to harvest resources and construct buildings, you'll need some tools. Fortunately, you've got a basic set already for you inside your new tents inventory. Open your tent by looking at it, press E, navigate to the storage tab, and drag the stone axe to your toolbar and select it. All right. So we're looking at the tent. We press E. We go to storage. It said the stone axe. OG's tiny stockpile to your toolbar. Okay. So we've done that. And then we close this. And the axe is selected. Now we have this up here. Stockpiles. Materials such as logs and stone are best placed into stockpiles so that crafting tables can be can use the resources directly. Next to your tent, there is a tiny stockpile suitable for a tiny amount of resources. Logs have a myriad of uses. Acquiring some early is a good first goal. Using the axe from the tent. Cut down a tree. Chop a tree until it falls over. Okay, so this must be, uh, yeah, OG's tiny stockpile. All right, now we want to cut a tree down. Um, I don't. I want to be a little bit careful about what trees I cut down in my living area because, you know, part of what makes this look cool are the trees. So we might want to kind of go elsewhere maybe to cut the trees down. Or what we could do is, I mean, if there's a... If it's a really thick area like this is, we could kind of selectively cut a few trees down. So let's go over here. And yeah, this is pretty thick in here, I'd say. So let's cut, let's cut this birch tree down. Uh, that kind of landed in a weird spot. Okay, now chop the felled log into pieces. Oh. Okay, pick up the pieces with E. Log is too large. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, I guess I guess we have to make them smaller. All right, um, place 10 logs in the stockpile. Okay, I hope that stuff stays there so we can come back and get, you know, get more of it. Something's running around over there. There we go. Wow, we, uh, we filled that up quite a bit, didn't we? Okay, um, normally I would go back and get the rest of that wood, and if it's still... Actually, you know what, I think... I think I saw that one guy was watching. Um, I think I saw him just stack it up on the ground. I don't want to waste anything is the thing. So uh, we were over here, right? There we go. Do we know how long this stuff will stay here? It doesn't say. 
it doesn't give us a you know a time frame here so let's pick up some more though okay so we can only carry that many um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these back to our campsite and we're going to uh, stack it up on the ground. Uh, so here again, we're not wasting it because I don't want to waste anything. This game is about conservation. But we're not going to put it in the stockpile because it looks like our stockpile is like already filled up quite a bit. Um, and I, I want to put it in some place where it's not going to be completely in the way either. Um, so what if we go over here let's yeah let's just put it right here can't place block there it's already stacked with birch log interesting okay so it looks like that's as much as we can do. All right, let's go back and get the rest of those materials. I believe we can also harvest the branches as well and use it for other things. Tree debris. Wait, what is that? I don't know what that is. All right, well... It doesn't... Is it part of the tree we just cut down or not? I don't know. Oh, it just disappeared. Okay. And we're supposed to be able to uh, remove the stump, too. You're too hungry to work. Oh, okay. So, um, let's, let's go back and place the logs, and then we'll eat something. Okay, let's put these here. Oh, we can't even we can't even put the wood down. Oh my goodness. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do then is let's go into our backpack and let's eat some corn. Uh, we just right click, right? And we'll have a beet and some tomatoes and a pumpkin. And what's this? Beet greens. Yeah, sure. That's probably got iron in it. Corn seed. No, I don't think we want to eat corn seed. All right. How how do I know how much to eat? Um, Round and large. Carbs. Yeah. Okay. I, we'll probably, it'll probably teach us that at some point, but let's just go with that for now. And, and you know, yeah, we'll just go with that for now. Okay. So can we go higher here? Interesting. Okay, so uh, we harvested that. I think we harvested that entire tree, except for maybe that piece that was up above that disappeared on us. And so now, uh, yeah, we've done that. All right, let's go ahead and continue the tutorial here. Crafting is done through a system called work orders. Work orders can be queued up and rearranged as they progress. Okay. Some recipes use tagged ingredients. It means that that order will accept any of the listed items. Wood tag. Okay, so any type of wood can be used to make that. Gotcha. Okay. Click next. Work orders also need labor to, com to complete. Labor costs calories and may require certain specialties. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Work orders will use nearby tables and storage to fulfill work orders. Storage links can be managed by interacting with the tables. Okay, so you put it's almost almost like a, a production chain kind of idea. Cool. All right. You can order more. Uh, you can order more products than you have ingredients. Work orders will pause and resume depending upon available resources. Gotcha. Okay, so if we had a work order that needed, you know, 100 wood and we had 50 in the stockpile, we'll use 50 and then it'll pause until we put more wood in the stockpile. That's what I think that means. All right. Now that you have some materials, you can create your first work order. The tent has a very limited recipe list and crafting a workbench is the first step to creating your first real house. Open the tent by walking up to it and pressing E. Okay.
Find the workbench recipe, select the number to craft, and click order. Workbench recipe, crafting. Here we go. It's, it's kind of wonky that this covers. Can we move this? Oh, we can. Okay, good. All right, so um, find the workbench recipe, select the number to craft. Uh, we just want one and click order. So it this requires 50 labor, which is 50 calories, and it requires uh, any kind of wood uh, or anything listed in the wood tag. And six more items. What are those six more items? Doesn't tell us. Okay. That's order. Okay. Add labor by clicking work on the project panel. Okay. So it's queued up, but then we have to click work. So, okay. So this is me working and it's consuming calories. Do we have to stay in the workbench while this is occurring? I would say probably not because, you know, later on we're probably going to want to queue up a whole bunch of stuff and we can't, we're not going to want to just sit there and, and watch the hair grow kind of, you know, sort of thing. Okay. So we're, we're done with that. Cool. So we now, we have a workbench. Is this, is that it? That must be the workbench, right? I don't remember seeing that before. Or did it put it into our inventory? Whoop, I keep hitting escape and it does the wrong thing. All right, I'm assuming this is the workbench. If we look at it and click on it, oh geez, campsite, it just opens the whole campsite. All right, so it looks to me like, at least with the tent, when you make stuff, um, it all just attaches to to one the, to the tent itself, and then when you click on the tent, uh, you can have access to anything that's attached to it. That's kind of what I'm interpreting there. That's interesting. We got we got the little uh, storage crate there. All right, you guys. Well, uh, I think that is it for this first episode. Um, again, let me know in the comments uh, what you guys think about this game. If you are an experienced player. I do welcome uh, tips and tricks, but please do not leave spoilers, okay? So nothing spoilerish, but if you have, you know, some advice for me on what's good to do, what isn't, um, I'm, I definitely welcome that, uh, you know, those sorts of comments. And uh, we will continue on in the next episode. We'll pick up right where we left off and go from there. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share out the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.